Today's episode is brought to you by Function of Beauty. Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. They create your unique formula based on a short but thorough quiz to give your hair everything it needs to look and feel its absolute best. Every product is sulfate and paraben free, vegan, cruelty free, and there are over 60,000 real five star customer reviews. Y'all know me and Ash love our freaking skin products, body products, and you also know we're suckers for, you know, an aesthetic bottle, aesthetic product. And it's super cool because we were introduced to Function of Beauty and they literally cover both. It's like great products, but that are so freaking cute. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% off your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know you heard about it here and to get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Canva. Canva Pro is the easiest way to create presentations like a pro. Whether you're presenting to your team, students, or clients, Canva Pro has beautiful layouts for every industry, theme, and project. If you don't know where to start, Canva Pro can help inspire your creativity with thousands of free designer-made templates that are totally customizable. If you guys have been following us from the very beginning on our Instagram, then you may spot a couple templates here and there. One of the things Taryn and I love about Canva is their templates. They have a ton of free designer made templates that are totally customizable and super helpful when you're getting started with a project and you don't really know where to begin. It's very inspirational when it comes to creating a theme or selling a message. So wow your audience with Canva Pro, the easiest way to create presentations. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial by just going to canva.me slash advice to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash advice. Canva dot me slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. They'll deliver what you need so you can spend more time on what matters. Thrive Market works directly with your favorite organic brand so you can get the best, highest quality products without the retail markups. Shop everything from ethically sourced pantry essentials to sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products. Mine Karen's favorite part is it comes to you. We don't have to leave the house. We can keep our slippers on, step outside, pick it up, and that's it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Um, Plus, you can easily shop by diets and values like keto, gluten-free, vegan, non-GMO, fair trade certified, and so much more. All you need to do is go to thrivemarket.com slash advice. Join today to get $20 off your first order and a free gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash advice to get $20 off your first order and a free gift. Thrivemarket.com slash advice. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taryn's Fact or Fiction, because actually, I think this is fact because it's from Cosmopolitan. Would you agree? Sure, 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 sure. sure. Then this is nuts. You ready? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The ancient Romans used to drop a piece of toast into their wine for good health. Hence why we say raise a toast. Yeah. I knew, I know this. You knew this. I knew this. I knew this from the big bang theory. I got a fun fact about me. I'm a, I I lived and breathed the big bang theory. It was on all the time. When I first met Taryn, that was, I was was in the middle of the height of that. that. (laughs) That's not right. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Sheldon said that quote once and I was like mind blown by it. Well, I thought you were going to be like, whoa, like I, mean, I did. It is. I'm sure our listeners are sitting there going, oh my God, I had no idea. I'm sure they're shocked. They're shocked. Okay. I, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. Hello. My name's Ashley. That's Taryn. This is Unsolicited Advice. And are we so excited to be talking to you guys today because we are continuing on in our Enneagram series. Um, Taryn and I are having a blast. Yes, we are. Diving in to all of these fun Enneagram numbers mm-hmm. and explaining to you guys why we're so obsessed with the Enneagram. Seriously. And I have my Darth Vader socks on, so you know it's bad so to be it's a, a good, good day. day. <laughs> <laughs> also, Taryn 
just uh, put together a Darth Vader Lego yes, set. Yes, I did. Uh, we had, should we just take a moment to just describe oh, yes. our absolutely yeah, wonderful I think we weekend? Should. I think we should. As you guys know, as you guys know, I recently launched a clothing brand with my sister. Woo! When I say <laughs> that it was one of the wildest weeks of my life, yeah. it was one of the wildest weeks of my life. It was exhausting. And I don't think I realized how tired I was. Yeah. Alicia had a bachelorette that she had to go to, which meant that Taryn and I were home alone. <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, are we doing this? And she was like, we're doing yes. this. And by doing this, I mean, we did nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. It was so good. I literally, guys, I heated the pool. I, I, I floated on a raft in my pool all day, yep. Saturday and Sunday. I, yes, I tried my hardest to not be on the phone. I listened to music and floated and I just thrived and yeah. it was fantastic. And I had the best no. weekend of my life. So good. I did kind of the same thing minus building a Lego set. And which, we watched which, Taryn, that is her oh, that's happy mine. place. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. thriving. Um, but it's funny because I, I was telling Ash and I was telling Lex this morning, I was like, I think the difference was we decided days before that that's what the weekend was going to be. So it was intentional. And I even had like my sister-in-law was like, hey, we're going to the beach today. Like, do you want to come? And I was like, I'm so sorry. I committed to Ash that (laughs) we're doing nothing at the house. Like we're, we're, we're in it. It was in the calendar. Yeah. That's how into it we were. It was great. Like I was super intentional. I had, I had work to do. Mm -hmm. I had things like I wanted to do, but I was like, we could have done No, I was like, no, this is intentional. And I felt like a new person starting Mm -hmm. Monday. Like Mm -hmm. I was genuinely like, okay, let's go. Yeah. Monday started. I was like, I'm going to hit it with the workout. I'm a, I'm going to do all the other things that I probably could have done this weekend, but didn't because I prioritize myself, my mental health and my self love. Yeah, girl. Also, got crazy, went and got a facial. I just feel great. Yeah. I feel great. No, literally new us. So <laughs> highly recommend if you're getting ready for your weekend, it's Monday now that you're listening to this. So start to put your ducks in Possibly. a row. They could be listening to this on a Thursday. They don't oh know. yeah. Whenever you're listening to this, get your ducks in a row, make the commitment to yourself because mm-hmm. it is intentional. It's not you being lazy. It's intentional and have like at least like a day this yeah. weekend, whether it's Saturday or Sunday that you just like let yourself veg, be intentional. Yeah. Highly also, recommend. Also, that's freaking biblical. Like, take a day off. That is Take Sabbath. a day off. I remember when I was in school, <laughs> all of my professors, like, without even, like, talking to each other, they just said this eventually at some point during class. They were like, yeah, when I was trying to get my my master's or my doctorate or whatever, um, they were like, it was a lot family was on the line marriage was on the line like there was a lot going on and they were like it was hard but I had to work 10 times harder during the week so that I could have one day off for myself and with my family yeah and that's they they said that's the only reason their families and marriages survived no while they were working and getting their doctorate you see studies of where they're like every 15 minutes you need to take a break where where you like let your eyes focus on something else like you get up and walk because that's how your brain is able to like keep going especially for like desk work yeah but people are like no I have to like do this deadline and keep working but it's actually counterproductive Mm -hmm. if you're not building in time for your body to like rest and reset yes so it's just important to like listen to yourself yeah I feel like I could go on a tangent right now I'm gonna say one more thing I was just (laughs) talking to someone else about about this we were talking about working out and rest days and how that's important and how like you can easily get addicted to the workout mm-hmm. and over exert yourself yeah and she was saying how <laughs> she knows random facts like this love her for that she was like oh well you know when like settlers came to like California when they were like crossing yeah um there were there was a group of people that we're trying to go hard every single day and there was a group of people that were taking a day off like actually taking a day off to rest and be communal Mm -hmm. and like, you know, take care of themselves. So they split up the people that are like, oh, we need to go every single day, go hard every single day, ended up going and not taking breaks. And the people that took breaks beat them. Yeah, it's nuts. Isn't that crazy? Because if you think about it, like you're, you're actually, you're being intentional about working and your body's fully able to recover so that when you're working, you're working at top speed instead of like dragging. So what you're saying is when I, rest when I walked my mile and almost beat my time of when I tried to run. Girl. I should not take that. Why run when you can be ashamed of? 
<laughs> you just rewrote my whole childhood, Ash. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, poor turn. Okay. Um, it is tearing it up time. It is. And y'all, Ash, if it's okay with you. Okay with me. I would like to share a recent personal one that honestly, it has to do with all of us. Well, you know what? We would love that, Taryn. Okay. This is your segment <laughs> after all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is your legacy. This okay. This you. So I, this had me dying. And I've, I've actually told you about this already. But okay. So- homegirls on dating apps because aren't we all <laughs> what else are you to do in this <laughs> time of age um but anyway so I'm connect with this guy he's super cute get it we I was like reading all his stuff like he seemed like a really good guy like he was like just everything matched a good height you know mm-hmm. the shallow things us girls care about sometimes anyways so uh, we're talking, the conversations are going great. And then all of a sudden he says, so are you an addict or are you recovering? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I, I literally look through my pictures because I'm like, what, what about a photo of me? Would you look and be like, are you an addict? Like I was like something about your face. I was like, do I look like I'm struggling in a photo? Like what is, so I literally look through my photos and I was like, I think I look cute. Like, (laughs) I don't think I look like I'm like dissecting every bit of you. Just like every photo. Imagine how, how rough you have to look in a photo to be like, for someone to be like, Oh, "Oh, she's battling her demons. You know what I mean? So then I was like, I even went to a friend. I was like, do I look, am I okay in yeah. these photos? Like I was so shocked and I didn't know how to respond. Right. So I finally was like, what? <laughs> like, excuse me. Um, I was like, no, I was like, why? And he was like, oh, he was like, well, your sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> because it says anonymous on it. I was wearing our merch. <laughs> So I would legit cry. <laughs> we would <laughs> love to. We would love to know if this has happened to anyone else that has purchased the anonymous I was merch. Like, what? And he was like, "Your sweatshirt says anonymous." He was like, "Do you volunteer?" <laughs> I was like, oh. "Oh." I was like, "No, it's this podcast I listen to." <laughs> listen uh, to? I didn't want him to know. What if he was crazy? What do you mean? I don't want to give him any Tell ideas. Him with pride this no, is my merch until he cut, tracks me podcast. down and kills me but anyways it was so funny but then i, I was like he could track you down from the podcast he could if you go to our podcast you could find our socials you could find if you i don't i don't want to give anyone we any. don't post where we live i know but still ashley there's Talk crazies about out there pride, Taryn. are you a crime junkie Taryn. or not i am but I'm we can talk you. about that this is our podcast. Oh, when it's a guy I like, I'm like, oh, my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyways, he wasn't even in like the possibility I category. Wasn't, I don't know. With dating apps, I'm always, I go in thinking they're silly, sillier, <laughs> a serial killer. And then I'm pleasantly surprised when they're not. That's Got my it. motto. But anyways, so it was really funny. But I was like, I don't think like, isn't the whole thing is you're anonymous. I don't think they have like club shirts that they're just like telling yeah. everyone but anyway it was just really funny and I was dying and I told Ashley and I was like um should we rethink our like <laughs> you know what I feel like they should have club shirts like I feel like there's nothing you know if, if someone wanted to be like not everyone has to wear it if they were uncomfortable but if I was struggling with something and I was like you know what like identifies other people yeah yeah, yeah. anyways but that club was shirts my- can be fun that was my personal tearing it up of, you know, one of many of my life <laughs> and my week, honestly. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like if you guys like know me and Ash personally, or even if you've listened to this podcast at all, you know, we are huge fans of, you know, people just making life easier for us, uh-huh. whether mm-hmm. that's a therapist, <laughs> you know, a friend, 
anything like that. And one of the things that's made our life so easy when it comes to like socials or meetings or things like that is Canva Pro. If you guys have been following us from the very beginning on our Instagram, then you may spot a couple templates here and there. One of the things Taryn and I love about Canva is their templates. They have a ton of free designer made templates that are totally customizable and super helpful when you're getting started with a project and you don't really know where to begin. It's very inspirational when it comes to creating a theme or selling a message. Thanks to Canva Pro's time-saving tools and editing features, I can create high quality, high resolution presentations in minutes and they look stunning. Also to step up your project just a couple notches, Canva Pro comes with endless extras like 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. You'll get all this and more in just one Canva Pro subscription. So wow your audience with Canva Pro, the easiest way to create presentations. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial by just going to canva.me slash advice to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash advice. Canva.me slash advice. So as many of us are trying to get our lives back together and trying to be healthy again, I know I definitely am (laughs) trying. Um, I know one thing is sometimes if it's inconvenient, Mm -hmm. I get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I'm so pumped to be able to be working with things like Thrive Market to make getting healthy food easy. If you guys don't already know, Thrive Market is an online membership-based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. They'll deliver what you need so you can spend more time on what matters, which is mine and Taryn's favorite part is it comes to you. We don't have to leave the house. We can keep our slippers on, step outside, pick it up, and that's it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Thrive Market works directly with your favorite organic brands so you can get the highest quality products without the retail markups, which is a huge plus. If that isn't enough reason to to shop with them. Thrive Market is also good for you and the planet. Orders are shipped for free and delivered with carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouses. And to top it off, when you join, you give back through Thrive Gives, their one for one membership matching program. Every paid membership sponsors a free one for a low income family, which Taryn and I are obsessed with. Yes, we are. So go to thrivemarket.com slash advice. Join today to get $20 off your first order and a free gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash advice to get $20 off your first order and a free gift. Thrivemarket.com slash advice. We are so excited to be here today to bring you guys two new numbers that we are talking about. As you guys know, if you haven't listened to any of our other Enneagram episodes, we have been slowly going through, not in any particular order, um, all of the Enneagram numbers. Um, We have a couple of things that we highly recommend that if you don't follow us on Instagram, stop what we're doing, just pause this real quick. Actually, you don't have to pause this. Just hop on your Instagram app, follow us at unsolicited advice pod that's the one (laughs) follow us there um we have a highlight with all of the information if you don't know what your enneagram number is you can take the test there's a free one there's one that you can pay for that's supposed to be a little bit more accurate if you are struggling between a couple numbers maybe you could do that we are also using um the road back to you book which is one of the books that got me into the enneagram in the first place and we also recommend the Sleeping at Last podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an artist who has taken each number and made a song out of each one and then breaks down um, the lyrics and the music yeah. and everything and is just a beautiful way to learn about it's your so number. Good. Also, can we just take a moment to just appreciate... Lexi, Lexi, our sexy Lexi, Mother because Donato. all of the graphics for Enneagram have been so just like aesthetically beautiful. Something She's happened. Killing the game. Something happened She's recently. Killing the game. Lexi like dipped her toe into the graphics world <laughs> and then just reemerged a graphic a goddess. Butterfly. Oh. <laughs> I don't, she was a caterpillar. And, <laughs> and then she's a butterfly. You say goddess, I say butterfly. <laughs> butterfly. Same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, she's been on the graphic like game. She's been killing yeah, it. She's killing been so it. Good. We love we love Lex. Uh, do we like do we want to rock, paper, scissors? Do you yeah, have a because, preference? Yeah. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Oh. Dang it. I get to go first. Okay. Guys, I'm very excited because um I am doing the Enneagram six. Mm-hmm. I have a I have a friend that is a six. My mother is this. I know. I know sixes. 
I feel like See, I know I'm sixes really well. Because I'm doing fives and I know nothing. So we'll we know a five. lean on each other. We know I a five. Actually, out of all the numbers, the five is what I know the least to. Same. Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited. Okay. As per usual, I'm going to go ahead and read from the Road Back to You book. Um, they do a great little like summarization of each number. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and read that. This is what it's like to be a six. I'm always imagining and planning for the worst. I often don't trust people who are in authority. People say I'm loyal, understanding, funny, and compassionate. Most of my friends don't have as much anxiety as I do. I act quickly in a crisis, but when things settle down, I fall apart. When my partner and I are doing really well in our relationship, I find myself wondering what will happen to spoil it. Being sure I've made the right decision is almost impossible. I'm aware that fear has dictated many of my choices in life. I don't like to find myself in an unpredictable situation. I find it hard to stop thinking about the things that I'm worried about. I'm generally not comfortable with extremes. I usually have so much to do, it's hard for me to finish tasks. I'm most comfortable when I'm around people who are pretty much like me. People tell me I can be overly pessimistic. I am slow to start, and once I do get started, I find myself continuing to think about what could possibly go wrong. I don't trust people who give me too many compliments. It helps me to have things in some kind of order. I like to be told I am good at my job, but I get very nervous when my boss wants to add to my responsibilities. I have to know people for a long time before I can really trust them. And I'm skeptical of things that are new and unknown. Dang. That is the six. It's so funny. I wish I could be with everyone listening for the people that are like, oh my gosh, like, do you are you reading my mail like mm-hmm. do you, like you're reading my description because I think it's so cool to like be like oh my god like I'm understood like I'm not weird like this is a personality type mm-hmm. and even um our close our close family friend and biggest fan Shelly mm. hi Shelly shout Shelley. out Shelly she texted me after the two episode and was like, oh my gosh, like I feel like we're the same person. And it was cool hearing like someone find discovery and like that. My mom's taking the test for the first time. Oh my like, God. It's just so, it's so cool because it's the whole thing of like human connection, right? Mm-hmm. Like a feeling, oh, I'm not alone. And there's people who understand me. So when you read that stuff, I'm always envisioning someone like sitting in their car or Going working out what? and being like, check. Check, oh my god, that's check, me! Oh check. my god, that's me! Oh yeah. my god, that was yesterday. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's just cool. Oh, it's absolutely insane. Um, so a fun fact about me and my sister and my mother: I'm a nine, my mom's a six, and my sister's a three. And within this is going to get a little complicated, but within the graph of the of the enneagram graph, there are only three numbers that form a triad, and it's the nine, the six, and the three. That's so, so cool. I go to my sister's number when I'm healthy. I go to my mom's number when I'm unhealthy. Okay. My sister goes to my number when she's unhealthy and goes to my mom's number when she's healthy, <laughs> like That's at the healthiest, nuts. like goes to the healthiest part of the six. Um, so I am connected to a six and I also know a lot of sixes in my life. And I think in summarization of the six, they are loyal to a fault mm-hmm. and struggle a lot with fear. So Every decision that they make in general, not always, but in general is usually driven by some sort of fear. Okay. Um, people like this are the best to have in your life because one, it doesn't matter what you do. They got your back. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what, it does not matter. Um, also, <laughs> if there's any kind of like catastrophe that happens, they're the best people to have in your life because they've already daydreamed, through, planned yeah. this whole thing through. <laughs> they have an escape route A, B, and C, yeah. and they have a bag packed ready to go because they have been waiting for this yeah. to happen because that's something, that's how their life is. Like they're constantly living in some kind of fear of something horrible happening, um, which also holds them back. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So- Are they the ones that it's like they're super loyal and like will be there for anything, but it, it takes like not to everyone. It's like, it takes time. Right. Um, so yes. Okay. (laughs) I was like, I feel like I've read that, but I don't know. The like biggest, you know, um, if you feel uncomfortable or scared or you're not comfortable with someone, your walls are up. 
right? Yeah. Uh-huh. A six's walls have a roof. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Like, With you a tiny can, hole at the top. A tiny little yeah. hole. <laughs> and if you are able to freaking like throw a rope up there and cl- carry yourself all the way up the wall and then lapel yourself down, <laughs> then you have gained their trust okay. and you, they will take care of you like no matter what. Yeah. Um, but it takes a lot for them to trust you. Got it. Okay. And that is the six. Okay. So, ooh, uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and read today's email from a six titled an Enneagram. <laughs> I can't talk <laughs> titled an Enneagram six with trust issues. She writes, hi, Ash and Taryn. I am hey. an Enneagram six wing five, which is so great because I believe Taryn is reading a five today. I am. I wonder mm-hmm. if she said her wing. That would be so funny if she's a five wing six. Honestly, I'm guessing that she's a five wing six. Okay. By her story. So that's interesting. Ash. Yeah. Okay, keep going. She says, I am an Enneagram six wing five with a self preserving subtype. I would like to remain anonymous, please. To start off, I love the podcast and both of your YouTube vids. Hello. Ah. I'm going to put a pin in this really quick. Taryn Renee has been posting the most amazing self-love series on her YouTube channel. Should she have been posting this entire time? Yes. <laughs> but the truth is she is back and she is back with a mission and a beautiful message. And I think it's a really incredible series. And I just want to take a second to say that if you're not following her on her YouTube channel, you should, um, because I think we're all about to witness a very amazing self-love journey and I can't wait to see where it goes. So um, thank you, Anonymous, for um, mentioning her channel because it gave me a second to Gosh. rant about it. Thanks, Ash. Don't cry. (laughs) (laughs) Me? (laughs) Calm down. (laughs) That was such a perfect That was a two two. and a nine. Okay, I gave you a little bit. Now, shut. No, (laughs) calm down. (laughs) Take it and leave it. (laughs) That was so funny. Um, Anyways, she continues. Your content seriously makes my day and allows me to feel seen and understood, which anonymous means the world to us. Yeah. As a number six, I am driven by fear. In order to deal with my fears, she puts in parentheses of rejection, being taken advantage of, etc. I constantly keep my guard up and do not get vulnerable to anyone. It has gotten to the point that I cannot build strong relationships because I'm just unable to express my actual feelings. When around other people, I put on a funny, likable, and chill persona. But on the inside, I'm always extremely hyper alert and anxious. Mm. I notice she puts in all caps every single detail around me at all times. Sometimes I love this about myself. I feel like I have a special superpower of being able to recognize everything that's going on around me. My alertness allows me to be one step ahead of everyone and protect myself from threats. But it also turns into a nagging obsession with spiraling thoughts. I constantly am in the past or in the future thinking about the hypothetical worst case scenario or feeling guilt for saying something stupid. The anxiety is pretty hard for me to deal with sometimes, but I have trouble opening up about it to people. My family and friends hardly know this side of me as they constantly only see the humorous and laid back persona that I put on. I want to work on expressing my feelings with other people, but I don't know how to gather up the courage and the trust. I know that not everyone can relate to these feelings, but I hope some of the listeners on this podcast can and feel seen. Thank you. And I love you girls. Anonymous. Ugh, love that. That's incredible. Yeah. I would agree. I feel like um, I'm going to go from like a personal standpoint because I do go to a six when I am in like an unhealthy state. I feel like I can. It's so weird. I feel like I'm two people sometimes. I can be very outgoing Mm -hmm. when I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like I can be like the center of, of the crowd. Like I can be, I can host. Um, if I feel comfortable with someone, I'm funny. (laughs) I'm like confident and I'm this person that I love. But if I am not in a healthy place, I'm questioning everything about myself. I'm questioning what they think about me a lot. And I'm unable to be outgoing. Like I've literally been in situations. It's, and it's hard because I am 
more of an outgoing person, I've been in situations where I could not figure out what to say next because I was in such a bad place. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. And that's a horrible feeling when you're sitting there, like, I don't know, on a date or with friends and you, you don't feel like yourself and you know that you have so much to share and to give to someone, but you just, you physically don't know how to do it in that moment. That's overwhelming and can be paralyzing. Oh my, paralyzing is such a perfect word for it because it's, it's one thing I think with specifically things like that. And I will get into this with five is very similar to is when you struggle with stuff like social interaction, it's one of those things that's very easy for people to be like, Oh my God, just talk. Like, yeah, just, just go, just have fun. Just get on the dance floor, just Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And it's things that are, I think more often than not easier for people. So it's things that are very handled in a very dismissive way. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, even watching getting closer to you and experiencing those times with you where I watched you and I saw how you literally, it was like you were trapped in your own body Mm -hmm. and like your eyes just had this look of like pure panic, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think when people take the time to actually like try to put themselves in someone's shoes of like, what would you do if you were in a room and you literally felt trapped and you were freaking out because even just saying something to someone felt terrifying, you know? Yeah. So I think it's, it's a lot of, and I think that's what's so cool about the Enneagram is it gives you not just saying like, oh, well, what would you do if you're in their shoes? But being like, well, read this and see exactly what it's like to be in their shoes, you know? Yeah. And then I think it also, if you are that number that you're struggling with those things, it gives you tools for Mm -hmm. how to combat that. Yeah. Um, What Taryn is talking about is I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I have this really weird, irrational fear of dancing in public. And (laughs) that sounds like one of the dumbest it is one of the dumbest things on the planet like why like why um if I am with a group of girls and I feel comfortable and confident with them and maybe I've had a couple drinks and I've had a good night and the vibe is just right and I'm in the center of the group not on the edge then I (laughs) I thrive then I can dance and I I feel comfortable Mm -hmm. but if it's a small you know if it's a small venue and I'm on the edge of the dancing group and I, you know, I, I don't have my confidence. Maybe I didn't get a little alcohol in me yeah. all of a sudden. Like I can't, I'm yeah. overthinking everything. I'm thinking about the, the weird creep in the corner. That's for sure. Watching me dance. Or I'm thinking about how everyone else around me looks so cool dancing and I'm just bopping over here, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'll compare myself to them or I'll think about the weirdo. And all of a sudden I'm incapable of dancing and yeah. it, it literally paralyzes me. Yeah. Um, and it's the most irrational thing, but it has consumed me at yeah. times. Mm-hmm. There's been times where I've been on the dance floor and Taryn's so good <laughs> with me <laughs> when that happens. She'll just, and Alicia, has gotten good at this too they'll both do this one thing well they'll grab my hands and they'll be like eye contact yeah look at me and I'll just like drag my eyes away from everyone else and look at them and they're like just just let loose just just go for yeah, it yeah. and I'm like <sighs> <laughs> like okay <laughs> and the only thing I can say is that that I have allowed that fear to take over me mm-hmm. and that is something that sixes struggle with yeah a lot my mother who I, I feel super comfortable talking about my mom um, <laughs> is a six and something that me and her struggled with a lot is the second I, I moved out, I was like, I moved out with a reason. I was like, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to travel the world. That's mm-hmm. all I wanted to do. Literally all I wanted to do. I saved my pennies and I did it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I traveled the world. Every country I went to, my mom was a hundred percent sure I was going to die. Oh, like a hundred percent sure. She was so worried. It ate her up alive to the point where I had to finally stop telling her what I was doing and where I was going every single day. Cause before I was like, I'll text you every day. I'll let you know what's going on to like ease her anxiety. But eventually I was like, I can't let you know because this is consuming you. Yeah. And she'll tell you to this day that it was extreme. Yeah. <laughs> and she's aware of it now. Um, but she can't, she couldn't help, but automatically see like the worst case scenario. Yeah. And what it is for sixes is I think what you have similar to Taryn being an empath, what you have is a gift, but that can, that cannot take over 
your life. Mm -hmm. Taryn can't go around her entire life thinking and putting everyone else's feelings above hers because then she's not going to do anything with her life. And sixes can't live their life with this absolute, you know, putting fear first because you're never going to leave the house. Yeah. Like, yes, it's a gift when used as a tool, not as a lifestyle. Does that make sense? Oh, fully. And one of my, one of my best friends, Nicole, she's a six. And it was funny because we, when she found that out, she calls me and she was like, does this make sense to you? And I was like, yes, (laughs) like a thousand percent. Yes. She is the most loyal friend in the entire world. Like overwhelmingly loyal in a good way. And But she has a lot of things with like freaking out or like anxiety about certain things. And there was one trip we went on where at that time, and we were young, but she was really stressed about money. And we went with people who were like very well off and were Mm -hmm. just like spending money on everything. And so there was this one day um, where she kept talking to me about just being everything we spent money on, she was like talking to me about. And so we finally got back in the hotel and I snapped at her in a way where I was just like, you, this is, you're like overwhelmed with this. Like Mm -hmm. you're not having fun on this trip. Like you're not enjoying anything. Like you're so focused on this that you're missing out on like the life that you're living. And it was this like really intense conversation, but it's one we still like, literally we just talked about it the other day again, because I think that's what can happen is, you know, the sixes, their anxiety and their thinking about worst case scenario can be something that's great. But if left unchecked, they can miss out on so much of life because of the fear of the worst thing that could happen. When in reality, yeah, it's a possibility, but that's, if we all lived our life not doing anything because something bad could happen, we wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's, it's very interesting. And, and I, so for, if you guys go to enneagraminstitute.com, they have great like breakdowns Mm -hmm. of the numbers and like key motivations for sixes are they want to have security, feel supported by others to have reassurance, to test the attitudes of others towards them, to fight against anxiety and security. And basically, you know, their biggest like fear is to be without support or guidance, like to feel vulnerable, which is why they're always anxious about preparing for everything and why they're so loyal is almost because they want to make sure that they have that support in their life too. Like they need that connection and that support. So I think it becomes something like with every number, it's it, every person has such a beautiful set of skills, but it can easily be turned into more of a crutch than something you use to like navigate through life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought this was interesting and I wish we did this for all the numbers. So if we've already done your number, go to Enneagram Institute for your number, but it gives examples of people. And this is really interesting. So other sixes, Mark Twain, Richard Nixon, Prince, um, Prince Harry. And then there's like Mark Wahlberg, um, Paul Rudd, Jennifer Aniston, Ben Affleck. So it's just like so interesting when you see like all of those people have such different personalities, yeah. but that's what the Enneagram is, is it's like the core of who they are. Yeah. And even like Ellen DeGeneres, like that makes sense to me because she is very paranoid about a lot of stuff and like things I've read. Yeah. So it's just so interesting to see how and why I think me and Ash love the Enneagram is it's a core thing, but what you do with your life and how you interpret your fears and what it leads you to do is like so different too. You yeah, know, yeah, it's like you, it doesn't matter what you look like. We all look very different from the outside, but your core struggles and your core strengths are yeah. the same. And that's interesting. And I think like to get back to anonymous expressing emotions, mm-hmm. I feel like we, we talk about this all the time. And I think just as like, we're looking at people specifically, you need to look at yourself specifically And I would start with a friend that you trust and you feel safe with. And I would just work on like, I, that's the thing. Like, I think people think like to express emotions, it has to be this like big conversation or this natural thing. Something I constantly struggle with too. Yes. And we've talked about too. Probably because I'm in my sixth self. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
But like there was a conversation I had recently with someone who was saying she was struggling with that. So we had a productive conversation. So find someone you think could do this. But I sat with her and I was like, okay, tell me a time that you felt sad this week. And so she told me, she was like, oh, um, like my friend said this, it made me feel sad. And I was like, okay, well, what was, what were you afraid of in that scenario to tell her why you were sad? Yeah. And they were like, oh, well, I didn't want to seem weak. I was like, okay, so what's the worst thing if she thought you were weak? Like what control would that have on you? And we taught, like literally broke down what the emotion was and what was under it. And then at the end I was like, okay, well tell me what you wish you would have said to her. And I think like, just like anything in life, if you're struggling with something, you can't just like wish it better. And it happens. It Mm -hmm. takes dedication and work. So I think like with Ash, like we've found ways to work through like our conversations and conflicts are never just this like natural thing. It's, It's usually me being like, Hey, can we talk about something and, and giving like, you time to panic I'm and like, freak out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we talk through it very strategically. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing is you need to find what works with you and find someone you trust that you can like workshop it, you yeah. know? And there's nothing wrong with that. Like there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that not being a natural thing. Yes. I completely agree with what Taryn just said. I think it sounds um, kind of cliche, but it really is baby steps. Yeah. And the, the more often that you allow yourself to be in that com- uncomfortable place, the more you'll have to like grow and evolve to, 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 to meet mm-hmm. that bar. Um, you know, there's been times where I didn't necessarily want to go out. Um, cause I was feeling some type of way and I forced myself and I survived, Yeah, <laughs> you know, it probably, it wasn't great, but like I did it. And that was me battling the social anxiety that I have Mm -hmm. when it comes to going out. Um, and I think the more that you take steps forward and challenge yourself in that way, the more you'll be surprised how you're able to like meet yourself there. And and yeah, I have, I'm stoked for you. I feel like, I feel like if you being a six, I feel like there are the, the people that you can trust with this are trustworthy. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you need to rely on the fact that they're in your circle in the first place means that they love you and yeah. that they're there for you. So I think you should yeah. Ooh, allow someone challenge. to come in. Ooh, challenge. I have a challenge. Them. Um, this week, whenever someone asks you this simple question of like, Oh, how are you? Answer honestly. Yeah. And even if that's just Don't a simple, fine. a simple question of like, honestly, like today was really stressful, but like I'm getting through it. It opens up a chance for you to talk about an emotion. If that person's like, oh, I'm sorry, that sucks. Then cool. You at least stuck up for like how you were feeling. Mm-hmm. If they dig deeper, like allow yourself to get in the conversation. But that's a very simple, easy way to open up to an emotional conversation without having to instigate. Yeah. So Someone asks you how you are, be like, you know, today's been rough. Like I got some family stuff. It's been rough. Yeah. And like, just open up to the possibility of a conversation. Anonymous. That's your homework, girl. And every other six listening right now. (laughs) Yeah. This is your homework (laughs) homework. for the week. Love that. Love you guys. Y'all know me and Ash love our freaking skin products, body products. And you also know... We're suckers for, you know, an aesthetic bottle, aesthetic product. And it's super cool because we were introduced to Function of Beauty and they literally cover both. It's like great products, but that are so freaking cute. Best of both worlds. (laughs) You get the best of both worlds. We were not... We didn't know what key. I mean, I nailed it. I don't know. I don't know what you were doing. (laughs) Guys, as you already know, Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. Every product is sulfate free, paraben free, vegan free, vegan free, (laughs) cruelty free. And there are over 60,000 real five star customer reviews, which says a lot because the people have spoken and the people, you know, the people don't hold back. Function of Beauty fans are absolutely wild about all of the fragrances and for a good reason. Your hair has never smelled more amazing. You can try the tropical mango, sweet peach, crisp pear, or subtle scents such as lavender, rose, and eucalyptus. If fragrance isn't for you, that's totally okay. You can go unscented. One of Taryn and I's favorite things about Function of Beauty is you can customize not only the product, but the packaging it comes in. You can pick the color of the product and the bottles. You even get to put your name on the bottle, which makes it very easy 
easy to make sure no one steals your stuff. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know you heard about it here and to get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash advice. So as we know, uh, we've all tried those home remedies or, you know, gone to the store and we're just like looking for anything that says like helps with acne, helps with this. <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> right? But what actually does work is prescription treatments. And that's why we're so pumped to be partnering with Apostrophe because they got you covered. If you guys don't know what Apostrophe is, Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. The difference here, guys, is the word clinically because it's a prescription. Apostrophe connects you with a board certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online skin quiz about your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies because we know you want to, and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan just for you. And of course, we got you guys covered with a special deal for just UA listeners. Save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash advice when you use our code advice. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash advice and click begin visit. Then use our code advice at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash advice and use the code advice to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we would like to say a huge thank you to Apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast. Okay, UA fam, you know, it's funny of all the things that I've been missing this past year, it's the little things I miss the most, like making awkward eye contact across the room or meeting strangers and having small talk. That's what I'm trying to get back to. Vaccination is the most effective way to help prevent COVID-19 and get back to good times. Find out where you can get your COVID-19 vaccine near you at vaccines.gov. That's V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S dot gov. Okay, well, um, this is also from our anonymous fam. And this is Enneagram Type 5 from Denmark. Hey, oh. Denmark. <laughs> you know when, like, <laughs> it reminds me of, my, like, the fact where I was, like, expecting a shocked emotion. And, like, right now I was expecting you to be like, whoa, Denmark. Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. been. I've never been either. But I love when people write in from like far from mm-hmm. us. Cause I'm like, Whoa, that's cool. Anyways. So we are going to be tackling Enneagram five. Ash, can you please read the like five prompts? I would be honored. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the five, <laughs> Oh, which is the investigator yes. is what the five is called. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what it's like to be a five. I can take care of myself and I think others can do the same. I don't always say things out loud, but in my head, I'm pretty sarcastic and cynical. (laughs) I often feel awkward around other people. I'm okay if people ask me a few specific questions about myself, but I don't like it when people want too much information. I need time alone. If I want people to know how I feel, I will tell them. I generally wish that they wouldn't ask. (laughs) (laughs) Mood. It's my favorite. (laughs) I think thoughts are more reliable than feelings. I need a couple of days to process an experience or know how I feel about something. People are wasteful. I hold on to what I have. Often I find that I would rather observe than participate. I trust myself. That means I think about things for a while and then I make my own decisions. I can't understand why people get together to just hang out. (laughs) I'm a listener. I have to be very careful with my time and energy. I get tired when I have to be with people for too long. I often felt invisible as a child. Sometimes as an adult, I choose to be invisible. Sometimes I think I should be more generous, but that's hard for me. In groups, being uninformed makes me very uncomfortable. I don't like big social gatherings. I'd rather be with just a few people. And material possessions do not make me happy. Dang. 
Dang. The one that I think the one that was like heavy was I often felt invisible as a child. And as an adult, I choose to be invisible. Dude, I know that was this. It's so funny because I think for me personally, um, and I don't know if this is just as a two thing or whatever, but this one is one that I feel this number that I have the most like empathy for Mm. because I think again, it's seeing things that come so easy. Like what I kind of was touching on in the last one, um, being so detrimental and like hard, it makes me sad. Like, and I feel like it must be so tiring to go throughout the day and be like, oh my gosh, like a family birthday party. Oh my gosh, like this. Oh my gosh, this. Like that's all life is. It's like social this. You got a meeting. You have a job. Mm -hmm. You have to go to this. You have to, oh, come meet my friend. Come do this birthday party. So I can't imagine what comes with this. And so reading this one, like I have like a soft spot for like what that must feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, We'll go deeper into a five in a second, but I'm going to read our story from Anonymous and they write, this isn't a dilemma. It's simply a story of being a five. I tried the Enneagram test a few years ago when I was done with my master's degree, being in a horrible state of stress and depression. I finally had time to explore my mind and my unhappiness. Having suffered from on and off depression for about 10 years, I finally told my parents about my depression and I went to therapy and did MBSR, which is the mindful mindfulness-based stress reduction course. I also did an Enneagram test and found out that I was a type five. I finally learned about my personality and most importantly, that I wasn't alone. I was a type. There were other people thinking like me out there. My type is prone to introvertedness, which fits me very well. I don't like social events, partying, and meeting new people. I love and crave alone time and being being in my close circle of family and friends. In this process, I learned that I recharge by being alone and I need to carefully manage my energy in social settings. It helps knowing what will happen, who will be there, and most importantly, when does it end in order to manage energy and when to take breaks like going outside. I used to leave social settings where I would break down when I got home, not knowing why and completely feeling drained. Learning how my brain works has changed my life. Learning that it's okay to be like me and I have to work with my personality and not against it. Dude, I'm not joking. Mic drop. That is the most mic drop Enneagram sentence I think we will read in this entire series. Yeah. I have to work with my personality and not against it. Like that's the whole point is like stop trying to fit into something take a second, look inside, figure out who you are and then make steps accordingly. Like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I, I love, I love that sentence so much. Um, should we make it a t-shirt? Yeah, honestly, (laughs) honestly, (laughs) honestly, I'm all Lexi. Can we get a graphic on our, (laughs) um, we're living in a world where extroverts are favored and celebrated. And I've been told so many times in my life that I need to speak more, smile more, just do it. And of course you want to go to that event and be more energetic. Basically my personality was wrong. I, as a person was wrong and needed to change, which has been super destructive. I hope that other fives or just other introverts hear this and understand that they are normal and absolutely fine the way that they are. Learn ways to work with your personality instead of trying to change who you are. Thanks for a great podcast. Love Anonymous. What? Dude, I Not Anonymous no. giving us life lessons right now. You know what? This is like, I feel I love these moments. And for me, this was such a like God moment because I was like looking at the numbers we didn't have. Right. And I was like, I don't want a five. I don't want a five. I don't want a five because that, like we were saying, is the one I know the least about. And so I see, I'm like scrolling this one for some reason caught my eye and I clicked on it. And not only 
it's this beautiful soul, but also like, it's not asking advice. It's her pouring out her heart of what she's learned. Yeah. And honestly, this advice for a five is way better than anything we could say. Honestly, because it's coming from someone who's dealt with that and who's come up with this like self-realization of nothing is wrong with who I am. And just because society only like raises up people who have the opposite of my personality that's not like that's yeah. not truth and I just I'm obsessed with you anonymous <laughs> I just want to say um and again that sentence I have to work with my personality and not against it is so beautiful mm -hmm. and what I loved about this too is I think um I think with all of our numbers, we have the one thing that's like our hurdle, right? And I think a lot of times we've talked about this before when we're talking about like self-love, self-improvement, a lot of times we try to find ways to go like to avoid them. Like you don't need to do that if you're not comfortable, let's avoid it, which there's, there's some aspect of that that's okay. But I think a lot of times in life, instead of avoiding problems, it's looking at the problem and being like, okay, well, how can I attack this? And I love that she put like for her going to a party is strategic. She's mm -hmm. like, okay, let me figure out when am I getting there? Who's going to be there? What to my time am I leaving? I know like within an hour I need to say like, oh, I have to make a phone call and just give myself a second outside. <laughs> me, like, anytime I go out dancing, I'm like, are, how many sevens are coming with me? Cause I need at yeah. least five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like that is so brilliant yeah. to me. Like, and it's not, it's, yeah, you'd like them to get to a point where they just enjoy it. But if that's not your personality type, then like, that's not something to put on yourself. It's unrealistic, you exactly. know? Exactly. And it's similar to what I said to our anonymous six on, in my email. Like you almost have to, you have to trust your personality. Yes. If you have people for, our, for my six, if she has people in her close circle, then she needs to be able to trust that she can trust them because she is a six yes. and they did work so hard to get in that circle. Then she needs to lean into that. And it's a similar thing with the five, like fives love research. And you wouldn't, you have to trust that you wouldn't jump into something unless you knew that you felt safe doing that, yeah. you know? So like, if you're going to go to a party and you're feeling overwhelmed, you need to trust that you've, you as a five have already like planned it out, yeah. you know? who's going you know your your plan b you know your escape route already like yes. if this gets too bad you know um and i think you just got to like lean into those strengths of your numbers yeah no totally and it's fun. i have a close friend who's a five and i've seen this firsthand of just watching how big those emotions are mm -hmm. of going somewhere and watching people be dismissive of her of like oh my gosh just like talk just yeah. like do this and and I think I think what a five a five really has to fight for themselves mm -hmm. like they really need to speak out and be okay with saying things of like hey um that I think that's going to be too much for me or like, Hey, I would love to come, but I think I can only handle like an hour or we were talking about this the other day. Cause we, some, one of our friends didn't want to go to something and was like, Oh, what reason should I say? And we were like, we need to start normalizing. Like you can say like, no, and you don't need a big old answer. No is an answer. Yeah. So if you're at a party and all of a sudden you hit your point and you're like, hey guys, I have to go. And they're like, why, why? Just, I have to go. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, you and don't like, have to do something, but you do have to know when it's time to stand up for yourself and be like, no, I need to separate for a bit, yeah. you know? And that's something that I feel like comes with experience. Yeah. I, for, for one, have struggled with stuff like that in the past. Like, uh, I, as a nine, I'm more of a people pleaser. And so I, I'll know, like, if people want to keep dancing or people want to mm -hmm. stay out or whatever, I, I want to like rally and be there. But the older I get, the more I'm like, it's fine. I'll Uber home. Yeah. Like I'm like, no one's feelings are getting hurt. I don't have a responsibility to stay out till two with you. The second I'm done, the I swear something happened when I turned 30. I was like, okay, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. You know, I'll see you later. Yeah. I love you. Like I'll do my rounds. I'll say goodbye Whereas to everyone. Before, that was probably terrifying. I would have hung you. out till yeah. two and had to wake up early the next day and been pissed about life. Yeah. And now I'm at a place where I'm just like, I don't care anymore. And I think it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Also, can I just say 
the whole point of friendships is like leaning on each other. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm telling you anonymous, all fives, all sixes, or anybody who struggles with like not being able to, um, like speak up if they need a second, Mm -hmm. find your friend who has no fear. I was going to say Ashley, if I knew Ashley was at a party and was freaking out for an hour because she wanted to leave, I would personally be offended because in my mind, I'm like, why didn't you just look at me? Like I would have said something like I've had friends before where they look at me and I'm like, Ooh, they're overwhelmed. And I'll step up and be like, okay guys, I'm going to go. Like I'm tired. Let's go. And like, I'll be the one that says it. Like we have to lean on people who have different skill sets Mm -hmm. than us. So Mm -hmm. Find your friends and tell them, be like, hey, when we go out, I just need to tell you this is how I feel Mm -hmm. and be like, I'm down to go to this party, but can we have a code word where you know, like I need rescuing pineapple and like, yeah, like lean on them. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it is offensive to your friends when they have skills that they want to share with you. So that's why you have squads. It's squad up. (laughs) Anyways. um, But yeah, so I think. Honestly, I I mean, there's not even much I have to say because I think our five who wrote in, first of all, is just a beautiful example of getting help when you need it and then coming up with those realizations and being unapologetically her. Uh Um, Some fives, Albert Einstein was a five. Uh, Hello. That makes sense. It makes sense to me, but I would have thought maybe like a one, Uh, Yeah, but five makes sense. Um, Salvador Dali. Okay. Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> like what's happening? Those are some big names right Tim there. Tim Burton. Get out of here. So girl or boy, whoever you are anonymous, <laughs> you like you, I'm so proud of you for stepping into who you are. Anyone who's listening to this and who is a five, I hope you feel heard and not alone. Um, find your people in your life, speak up for yourself. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you. You do not need to change. You are a beautiful person who we need in this world. You're necessary. Like imagine if all those people I just read were like, Oh, I can't do the things I want to do because I need to be someone else. And I need to be like doing like, those are all like very, (laughs) no electricity for us. (laughs) We would be dead. Didn't he help with electricity? (laughs) No, Uh, I did. No, we didn't. No, he definitely did not. No. Oh, Einstein. No. Oh, no. Come Mash. Mash. Nah. <laughs> he did math. <laughs> math. <laughs> oh, my God. Stephen King. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Beautiful wow, wow. minds. Tom York, Radiohead. <laughs> Girl. I'm Girl. just saying. You, you are in a solid, strong crew of fives. I'm embarrassed that I said electricity. I think you should be. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> You want to edit it out? No. <laughs> I want to be raw and real. I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, it's okay. No. I've said some, uh, we've all said some things on this podcast. Um, But thank you so much for writing in again. Again, the quote I want everyone to hear mm-hmm. and say in your life over and over. Our mantra. Learning that it's okay to be me. I have to work with my personality and not against it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful words. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we love you all so, so much. Um, Let's, you know, ring it out with a ring it out. Dad joke. Ring it out. Ring in the year. (laughs) Are you proud of, are you proud of that joke? Yeah. definitely a different type of ring but ring it out what are you talking about like you ring in the new year <laughs> that's not at all what i was i know that's why i said that's a different ring it out no like ring in the new year <laughs> ring in not ring out i can say whatever i want whatever okay guys we're a wet towel <laughs> ready <laughs> Lexi thinks I'm funny. Get out, Ash. Lexi thinks I'm funny. (laughs) Um, Ready? I was born ready. One day, I was in the park wondering why Frisbees get bigger. And then it hit me. (laughs) (laughs) That was good. That was, you know what? That was a quality joke. I like that one a lot. Thank you. I don't say that. I don't know why I said thank you. I literally read it out of a book. 
Thank you. I wrote that reminds it. me of the TikTok guy. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I love the one where he's like, um, something about how men play PlayStation constantly. Yeah, like, and then he was like, and since I am also constantly played by men, I will be identifying as a PlayStation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love him. Uh, guys, thank you so much. If you are still listening to this, then you're the realist and we love you the mostest. Um, be sure to follow us on all our socials. Again, if you want any Enneagram, you know, resources, help, knowledge, it's all on our Instagram currently. Yes. So hop on over there and take a gander. Um, and yeah. Can we also just take a second to be proud of our five and six who wrote in? Our five and six killed it today. Yeah, they yeah. really did. Thank yeah. you for being brave and sharing because... You're going to reach so many people. So mm -hmm. we appreciate you. Be proud of yourselves. Be we're proud of yourself. You. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye. Bye. Okay, UA fam, you know, it's funny. Of all the things that I've been missing this past year, it's the little things I miss the most, like making awkward eye contact across the room or meeting strangers and having small talk. That's what I'm trying to get back to. Vaccination is the most effective way to help prevent COVID-19 and get back to good times. Find out where you can get your COVID-19 vaccine near you at vaccines.gov. That's V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S dot gov.